Welcome to the Vector Virtual Cybersecurity Symposium 2024. My name is Andreas Horn and I'm Senior Manager for Code Testing Solutions at Vector. In the next 20 minutes, I will show you how you can learn from others and deliver secure code by using CWE for continual cybersecurity activities. I will talk about the importance of weaknesses in the modern software landscape and show how to avoid them effectively. For that, first, we will take a short look at the cybersecurity activities that are required for security relevant products. Then, an example in the form of a famous bug will illustrate the importance of these cybersecurity activities. Short disclaimer, this is not about incident response. We'll talk about what caused the bug, because this will take us to the meaning and importance of weaknesses. For better classification, a comparison of the check for weaknesses to the application of coding guidelines, namely CERT C, is also drawn. And finally, we will take a look at how this can be integrated into the development and release process. So today, cybersecurity is an important topic. And this means that cybersecurity risk management is also an essential part of software development. And so we have to apply it during the whole development cycle of the project. But it does not end there. Cybersecurity risk has to be monitored not only during the development, but more importantly during operations. And there are also more and more regulations, laws and acts that require you as a manufacturer to monitor your products with regard to cybersecurity over the whole product lifecycle. And this is normally done with project independent activities. We have, for example, collect cybersecurity information. We have to evaluate cybersecurity events. We have to examine weaknesses for exploitability and we have to manage potential vulnerabilities. So this means that we need continual effort to achieve, maintain and uphold cybersecurity. And to give you an example for the importance of these continual activities, we will take a look at a famous bug. So 10 years ago, there was the so-called heartbleed bug. For you that don't remember that, it was a bug that was part of the OpenSSL library. In the, in the beginning, it was just a simple thing. A client could ask the server, server, are you still there? Then respond me the four letter word bird. And then the server would respond with the four letter word bird. So far, so good. But there was an issue. And this led to the heart bleed because the consistency of the word that was asked as a response and the requested word length was not checked. So you could ask the server, server, if you are still there, please respond with this 500 letter word, bird. And then the server would respond with bird and the following 496 letters. There was no limitation. So that was bad and someone had to notice such a mistake. And yes, it was noticed, but not immediately. Let's take a look at the timeline. End of 2011, on the 31st of December, the weakness was committed to the repository that later on was integrated into OpenSSL 1.01. And once this was released, this weakness was in the world. And then it, and then it stayed undiscovered for almost two years. The end of the year 2013, the, the vulnerability was discovered. And then in March of the following year, 2014, the weakness report or the vulnerability report was published and then fixed. So it took a long time from the introduction of this vulnerability to the fix. And I hear you say that's bad. But how bad was it really? The total impact of this vulnerability cannot be measured as there are no traces. And this is what makes it even worse. It was accessible from everywhere. It required no privileges, no user interaction and provided access to potentially highly confidential information. An internationally renowned, uh, an internationally renowned security technologist, Bruce Schneier said about Heartbleed, 
Catastrophic is the right word. On a scale from 1 to 10, this is an 11. And the Heartbleed bug, it was filed as a vulnerability in the CVE database, CVE, the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, with a rating of high. So you might say, this is just a vulnerability in OpenSSL, which is fixed. Correct. But let us take a closer look at vulnerabilities in general. A vulnerability in itself is not the cause, but the symptom of a problem. And when we want to fix a problem, we have to fix the cause and not the symptom. So each vulnerability is based on a weakness. And if a weakness is exploitable, it turns into a vulnerability. And there is more than just one possibility how this can happen. Again, let's take a look at the Heartbleed bug filed as CVE 2014 160, you see 2014, the year when it was filed. This is based upon a weakness that is an out of bounds read, which can be found under the identifier CWE125. And this weakness was not only the cause of, for the heartbleed bug, currently it is linked to 13 different vulnerabilities. Remember, Heartbleed happened in 2014, this is the first on top. But the vulnerabilities linked to this weakness date back to 2004. And the latest one is from 2021. And the weakness remains relevant to this day. But wait, CWE? CWE, the Common Weakness Enumeration. Like the CVE, it is operated by the MITRE Corporation and it is a community project. The main goal of CWE is to stop vulnerabilities at the source by educating software and hardware architects, designers, programmers and acquirers on how to eliminate the most common mistakes before products are delivered. And they do this by publishing multiple lists. They map the CVEs to CWEs in form of the root cause analysis and they publish uh, these weaknesses in a database. Additionally, they publish a top 25 based on uh, the estimated uh, severity of the weaknesses. And additionally, since last year, they also publish a list of known exploited vulnerabilities. So these vulnerabilities are even more severe because they have been actually exploited. So the potential risk that you have if these weaknesses are contained in your software is even higher. To get an impression and a feeling for it, here's a look at the current known exploited vulnerabilities top 10. And there we see weaknesses from different areas. Most of them deal with memory safety. The next section are improper input validation, injection, access and resource control, resource management and file handling. What we also see here is the analysis score. This analysis score considers not only the rated severity, but also the probability of being exploited based on known exploited vulnerabilities. And even more important, all these weaknesses are detectable using Static Application Security Testing Tool, SAST. And the relevance of checking for these weaknesses will also become apparent with the next example. You may all remember what happened earlier this year, the so-called CrowdStrike incident. And this incident was not an exploited vulnerability. It was not a cybersecurity attack. It was a bug. And it happened due to a security update of an application that is part of, let's say, 8.5 million Windows PCs that crashed due to that update. And uh, it was not able to recover these systems. It was a very persistent error. So restart was not possible. Windows kept getting stuck in the same place. And according to unconfirmed rumors, the trigger was a new feature in a Cobalt Strike attack framework, which criminals also like to use. So they intended to fix a security issue, but caused this heavy incidence. And it is considered to be the worst IT outage in history. 
And although the exact cause has not been disclosed, there are five candidates that could be responsible for the problem, either alone or in combination. These five weaknesses could be possible causes for this CrowdStrike incident. And here we meet again CWE 125, the out-of-bounds read, but also other issues, other weaknesses like null pointer dereference or use of uninitialized variables. I additionally put here the information how high they rank in either the top 25 or the top 10 of the known exploited vulnerabilities. And besides that, you also see if this could have been avoided using a coding guideline like cert C. And here we see, okay, most of these weaknesses we would have covered with CWE, but not all of them. The top one in the 25 and the top three in the top 10 KEV has not been covered. But okay, cert C seems to be a good fit, but then why not just apply cert C? Not all important weaknesses are covered and the intention of cert C and CWE are different. Let me show you. We will begin with CWE. When we put a product on the market, we have a product release and then the product is out there and then a vulnerability happens. Then we have a known vulnerability. Okay, we do continual cybersecurity activities, we do monitoring and then we notice that there is a vulnerability and so we have to deal with it. We have to do an update to get rid of this vulnerability. Hopefully we are able to fix this before it becomes a known exploited vulnerability, before it is really exploited. And then after that, the CWE will map this vulnerability and the known exploited vulnerability to either an existing weakness or a new one. The intention of that is for future monitoring, we know these weaknesses and with this knowledge of the common weakness enumeration, we can prevent these vulnerabilities from recurring. So CWE is about learning from what has happened and then making products more secure. How about CERT C? CERT C is not just about weaknesses, it contains coding guidelines also dealing with other characteristics of the code and the development process. The standard is continuously developed and considers also weaknesses from the past. But even if you have used Cert C during your development, you have to do cybersecurity monitoring. But by the application of Cert C, your product is more resilient against security issues, more robust from the start. So new weaknesses and vulnerabilities may be considered for future monitoring activities or future releases of Cert C. Already today, many of the guidelines in Cert C are directly related to the CWE IDs. When you take a look at Cert C guidelines, uh, they are available on the internet. Uh, the guidelines reference CWE IDs in the related guidelines section of the corresponding rules. On the other hand, on the CWE side, um, there's also one ID dedicated to the mapping of CWE IDs to Cert C. So from both sides, you can see which CWE rules are covered by Cert C. And following Cert C will allow developers to prevent the listed weaknesses. But not all of them, as already shown, there are relevant weaknesses which are not addressed by Cert C. The top 25 and the CAF top 10 are very useful instruments here. And when we take a look at the statistics, there are many more weaknesses to be covered. So let's summarize and wrap up how CWE can be used for continual cybersecurity activities. So for monitoring and event evaluation, it can be an additional source of cybersecurity information, but this is not the main focus of these weaknesses. The strong point is really when you use it for vulnerability analysis and vulnerability management. For vulnerability analysis, you can check your source code for known weaknesses and then assess if these identified weaknesses can be exploited. 
And for vulnerability management, you have to track the removal of, un, uh, of identified weaknesses in the source code, and then you can use, for example, static analysis tools to continuously check for CWE. And static analysis is the key to also integrating these continuous checks for CWE into your development process. You can have them completely integrated into your IDE, so you have the findings always at hand. With each code change that you do, you can run the analysis and see if it has introduced any weaknesses. And then you can also fully integrate this check into your build pipelines and have it checked with each build. You can even go one step further and stop the build pipeline as soon as a weakness has been identified. And CrowdStrike has shown it, each code change has to be checked for compliance with coding standards and CWE. So from our side, our offering for static application security testing tool is, for example, PCLint Plus. It is for C and C++ code. It is a reliable tool and you can reliably check for compliance with coding standards like Cert C and CWE. And you can also use it for functional safety and as a static application security testing tool. It is ISO certified and CWE compatible. And this brings me to the summary and conclusion of this presentation. While vulnerabilities may be one of events, weaknesses are the root cause. So these are really the problems, the issues that we have to deal with. CWE is a freely available globally rec recognized source for weaknesses and the CWE top 25 and known exploited vulnerabilities top 10 are good sources for identifying the most significant current weaknesses. Checking for weaknesses using CWE complements the use of common coding guidelines such as Cert C, can be used as a source for cybersecurity information and as a basis for analysis and management of vulnerabilities. The use of static application security tools like PCLint Plus can ensure continuous checking for weaknesses according to CWE. And integration into the IDE and the build pipeline ensure that no code changes are delivered unchecked. And this concludes my presentation. And I'm really looking forward to your questions and hopefully I can answer them all. See you in the Q&A session.